Hi, I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of Backstage Magazine, and I'm super excited to be sitting here with uh, Kristen Ritter, star of a lot of things, but most recently Jessica Jones. It was which, just on, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which you just watched. And I have to say, as somebody who watches a lot of TV, oh God, I'm going to be bellowing in people's ears like Lauren Bacall. Um, as someone who watches a lot of TV, this is a really extraordinary pilot because this conveys a lot of exposition. Without, with, without saying anything. Yes, yeah. without you being like, and I have superpowers. Or there's this bad guy, and he did this, and now he's coming back, and this is going to happen. Yes. So yeah. I'm wondering, because it's so visually stunning, and it's so noir-influenced, I'm wondering how it read on the page when you first got the script. Well, first of all, it's Marvel, so did you even get a script for the audition? I did not get a script for the audition. I, I'll give you the whole scoop. Oh. Um, uh, so I got a call that Netflix wanted to see me for the show, and I really wanted to work with Netflix. But my manager, um, who's here today, pitched the show so badly to me. Um, he was like, oh, it's a superhero show. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to, I'm never going to get that. Look at me. He's like, no, 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 she's a superhero, but she's really bad at it. <laughs> so I just, like, I don't know. I thought you of said, like. yes, that's me. Like, what are you talking about? What, what is that supposed to mean? So I imagined it was a comedy or Pratt Falls or like that movie Super X Girlfriend or something. Yeah. Um, so, which is also great. Uh, <laughs> So I got the sides, and it was a scene from the pilot with Luke Cage in the bar, and a scene with Trish, played by Rachel Taylor, when I show up at her house and say he's back. So just in these five to eight pages of sides, there was so much there. She's so drunk. You're, she's alluding to this like really awful backstory or like, this past. Um, so I had to create all that stuff just for the audition. Yeah. So I knew like there was some good stuff and some real work to be done. So then after that, um, some time went by. I was up for another show, didn't get it. And then they're like, oh, you didn't get this, but you're still in the mix for Jessica Jones. I was like, oh, that thing I went in for like a month ago? I, I had no idea. So I have a meeting with Melissa Rosenberg and Jeff Loeb from Marvel. And they start pitching me the show and talking about it in terms of like it just being this really dark, gritty, grounded drama a la Homeland or Dexter, yeah. tonally. Um, so at the end of the meeting, they also you know, they're saying she needs to be strong, she needs to be vulnerable, there's like really, you know, they need dramatic chops and all of this. At the end, they said, and she also needs to be funny. So that's not like, can I do it? Where do I sign? Give it to me. Um, <laughs> and then they locked me in a room and I read the scripts. Page one, I'm like, oh my God, she's on every page. She's so cool, she's walking around like, looking, looking like cars. a badass, lifting cars, punching people. And it was so character driven. I noticed right away there wasn't that exposition that you yeah. see a lot in network shows. Um, and I was so excited by that challenge because they relied on me so heavily to convey the story. So that's on me to do, to do my homework as an actor, to yeah. layer in that subtext so that it's my face that's telling you what's happening, what's coming. You know something bad is coming, but you don't know why. You just know because of, of how I'm like, you know, almost crumbling. Well, I think one of the most extraordinary things about the pilot is the street names. Yeah. Well, that's a, that was a technique, you know, and we talked a lot about that. Um, that was a, a grounding technique, a way to get present, a way to get in control. And, you know, you have to do that sometimes even in life. Like, if you start to yeah. get, like, really panicky or something, like right now, <laughs> you <laughs> touch things, you know, you take a deep breath, you're, you make, yeah, you're like, I'm here, <laughs> nothing bad is going to happen. But with, with those things, like that was something that she worked on with her therapist that she went to and gave her this technique to try to get present. But what's wonderful about the show and how it treats this audience is that isn't explained until a couple of episodes in. Right. So you just hear her repeating these street names. Right. And you, you can see it in your face that it's calming her and it's centering her. Yeah. But you don't understand where it came from or why she's doing it. Yeah, and, and I started to feel that way a few episodes in. So I'm like, I'm doing this a lot. Um, do you think we should, like, is there something else we could do? They're like, no, it's going to pay off in, in, that, in an episode down the line when Kilgrave goes to my childhood home. And you don't really know where he is yet until the camera pulls back and reveals Birch Street, Higgins Drive, and you're like, oh, shit. Which, again, pays off the audience's attention because yeah. it's never underlined. You, the show expects you to remember these street names right. and to put the pieces together. And as a, someone who watches TV, like, I love a show 
that respects my intelligence and respects that I'm investing time in yeah, this. Yeah, and you're paying attention. And that I'm paying attention. And that's the cool thing about streaming also, because yes. the shows are designed to watch them in a row, and you can have something pay off seven episodes later. You can yeah. plant seeds for a, a joke or something in episode two and not bring it up again until five or six. So how many episodes did you read before shooting the pilot? How many four. were written? So you had four episodes to work with. Yeah. Was that helpful, like prepping the character? Yeah, I, I needed all of that. Um, I, I worked on all of them for hours and hours every day. Um, and also I had the comic books, which yeah. explored a bit of her backstory with Kilgrave. Um, obviously, the sh it lives differently in the show than it does in the comic books. But having all of that material was great because then I knew her. I knew how to approach every situation. I knew how, what she was informed by. And then from there, I could kind of handle whatever came. And then it got to the point where I was just keeping up. I would get my script and yeah. read it, and we would do table reads all together and, and not really have a lot of prep time. So I spent two months just going over my scripts and learning it and, and getting in her skin. And then there comes a point where that takes over. Yeah. Is it nerve wracking to have gone to go from four scripts and all of that knowledge going into, you, you know what's going to happen in episode four when you're filming episode two, to go in just week by week and not knowing what's coming up as you're making choices in the moment? You would think, but, but no, something magic happens. You, yeah. you just get in there and you're so in the machine of episodic television because it's such a grind, it's long hours, and you're just like, that's all you're doing, yeah. that you can handle it. There, there comes a point where you, you just know your character so well. So I was able to handle like, okay, I have a new scene I've never seen, we're gonna shoot it this afternoon, I'm gonna look at it and I'll be able to pick it up. How, are you fast at memorizing? Yeah. Oh, look oh, yeah. at you. <laughs> But you have to be. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm lucky I can read something once and kind of, kind of know it. But it's not, it's not really about knowing the lines. It's about knowing the character. Because then yeah. if you forget a line, if you connect with your scene partner and you listen to what they just said, yeah. you know how to respond. So for me, th this show, in terms of like the work I had to do, wasn't really about memorizing lines on the day. It was learning who she is before I even showed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it helps, too, that you have such an amazing supporting cast. I have an amazing supporting cast. Also, I don't have a lot of jargon. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have character-driven dialogue, yeah. so that's easier to remember. Great writing is easier to remember. Yeah. Um, but I've definitely done things, you know, if you do a procedural show or a medical anything, and you're talking about things you don't know, yeah, those lines are hard to learn. <laughs> but, but for this, um, it wasn't, wasn't that, that difficult. Were you, I'm curious about the order of the casting. Were you the first one cast? Or I was. Others? I was the first one cast. Uh -oh. um, Mike Coulter um, was kind of cast at the same time, but he wasn't official until Until you later. approved him. No, I, we had our screen test together, um, but they were just focused on Jessica, and then they finally called me up six weeks later to be like, oh, by the way, Mike Coulter got the part. I'm like, I thought he got the part when I did. <laughs> but, yeah. So were you involved with, um, did you do a chemistry read with uh, Rachel Taylor? No, that is just pure luck that we work together so beautifully, and I adore her. She's one of the fiercest, most committed actresses. Uh, she can, like, she has to do some, some stuff where she's like, you know, dying or like gasping and all, she commits yeah. and goes for it and falls on the ground and, uh, it just makes it makes your job so much easier if you have an actress that's just going for it like that. I mean, she has to exercise. You just have to drink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like she's got to get into that <laughs> yeah, shape. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, no, and I do. I think that you do have a really beautiful working relationship, and I think it's one of the things people really responded to the most with Jessica Jones. It's one of my favorite things about the show. Not only is it a female-fronted superhero series, but there's this amazing uh, female friendship at the core of it, and also. I'm curious about, because it's gotten a lot of attention in the press about the female sexuality aspect of the series, was that something that you guys were aware of when you were filming it? Um, were there conversations about? I, my acting teacher and I talked a lot about um, the relationship with Jessica and Trish. Yeah. We thought there was some history there. And I would ask Mel, and she didn't tell me. She, uh, she didn't tell, because she didn't tell me what was coming. But that, fem that relationship was so layered. I thought maybe they were ex-lovers. Yeah. Um, so it, I guess they weren't. It turned out that they were sisters. <laughs> a little different, <laughs> but that connection, that 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 connection, like 
runs pretty deep. Um, yeah, a little, very different. <laughs> uh, but, but it was still a, a very deep love between those, those two women. I feel like that's the heart of the show, that relationship. It and it, it's so exciting. Rachel and I, you know, we're kind of the same age. We both are into the same stuff. We both have long-haired boyfriends. We just kind of hit it off <laughs> right away from the beginning. And we were in it together. Early on, I only got sick once during this whole show. I had a really bad sore throat. And you still have to go to work, you know? Yeah. And I'm dying and just like, you know, muscling through and trying to crush it. And I got back to my trailer and she had sent me flowers. She's like, I heard you're sick. Just want to send you some love. I'm here for you. Uh, and I'm Thanks. like, I'm so lucky, so lucky. I'm the boss and nobody does that for me when <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> but it's nice, it's nice, it's nice to do it. If oh. you ever have an idea to send somebody flowers, just do it. Not until somebody sends me flowers. Okay, got it. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, do you do you guys get a lot of time to rehearse beforehand? Do you? No, no. <laughs> I think that like some of the some of the other actors that were involved in stunts and things like that, they would have time to do a stunt rehearsal. Sure. But I, I didn't even have time for that because I, I you know I'm in almost every scene, and if you're not like during a lunch break or something, you maybe have to do a fitting for the following episode or you do a table read or also I have a voiceover, so I was in the ADR booth. So there wasn't any time for me to, to do any kind of rehearsal. So I'm learning like stunt moves and uh, on the day, yeah. like dur during the camera setups. And that's what we would, I would kind of rehearse that in between, in between setups. You're like Beyonce, <laughs> just taking on everything all at yeah, once. Yeah, I'm exactly like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's going to be the quote from the night. Ah, yeah. Chris and Ritter, I'm exactly like they are. OK, print it. <laughs> um, but I did want to talk to you. I'm glad that you brought up the voiceover, because voiceover, for me, is one of the hardest things to, for an actor to get right. Because if you veer too far into, especially with something like this that's so moody and so atmospheric, if you veer too hard into hard-boiled territory, then it comes across as a spoof or a satire. Right. And you really nail it in every episode. Like, it's just weary enough without seeming like over the top weary. Right. And was it difficult for you to find that line? Um, it, well, I wouldn't say it was difficult, but I, it was definitely um, something we worked hard on. Yeah. Um, first of all, the writing is great. Yeah. Um, but finding that place for Jessica, uh, my, my voice is very high pitched and I talk really fast, blah, blah, blah. So it was really about grounding myself and, and finding where my voice would live for the voiceover. Yeah. Um, but, but I think they, in the beginning, in the development process, they went back and forth whether or not they would, it would even have it, um, but decided for this noir kind of thing and getting inside her head, you, you needed it. And I, I, and I, think, it, I think they were right. Well, I, actually, you just brought up something else that I wanted to discuss, uh, your voice on the series, because it is very different from what we've heard from you before. Yeah, I'm doing kind of a different voice. And at what point, and that's not something that you see a lot of people doing, and it works beautifully for the character. And at what point did you think, like, oh, I want to like take it down, and I want to do this kind of um, exhausted sound? Yeah, I, I did some voice work with my acting coach, just just about instead of like talking from here, kind of bringing it down. Um, and because she's got the weight of the world on her, and she's weathered, yeah. and she is traumatized in so many ways, I just didn't think she should sound perky. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah. why you got the role. Yeah, that's why, I guess. Everyone else is a perky Jessica Jones. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you work with an acting coach on yeah. every project, or just on this one specifically? Almost everything, yeah. Some things I don't. Some stuff that's like right in my sweet spot, I don't really. But, but anything that has, that has like real stakes, and this is a big part, yeah. you know what I mean? And I, I felt a lot of pressure to do a great job. So I knew I would feel more confident showing up on day one and day 101, yeah. <laughs> if, if I was really prepared. Well, especially with no rehearsal, too. Right. Um, what, I mean, not to get too, I don't want to invade your craft. No, it's fine. But uh, what do you guys talk about? Do you just look at the script and work out beats? And We talk about, we kind of go through everything and find all the seeds that the writers have planted, yeah. even the ones that maybe they don't know are there. That's the beautiful thing about writers. Sometimes they'll write something, and you'll talk to them about it. and. And they don't know. They, yeah. they don't know like how, how genius it is. So we would just talk about it in terms of character, backstory, um, finding as many colors as possible, and then working on a physicality and a voice, and just talking about it and getting excited about it. 
hours and hours, and just kind of going through the scenes and trying this, trying that, whatever. Yeah. I feel like, for me, uh, because I, I do put so much pressure on myself and I get so nervous, I always feel better if I'm like so prepared. If you're so prepared, you can be free. Anything, you can throw something at you. Um, so it's just about learning the material inside and out. Well, I think that you said in your backstage cover story. <laughs> Do we have that? December 2014. That? I actually have it in my bag oh, in the really? green room. Oh, cool. I meant to get a photo of oh, you fine. holding it. But Let's do that later. after. Yeah. Okay. Um, over your scotch, just bottles of scotch in my water bottle. Sure. Um, this is scotch, by the way. <laughs> um, but you said a, a big part of the interview, which I thought was um, really remarkable, is that you have learned how to embrace your nervousness. Yeah which is something that I struggle with on, on the daily. Tell me about it. <laughs> like a walking panic attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta just find a way to harness it. But I mean, what do you what do? You do? So you're, you're, walking into, <laughs> you're walking into the Jessica Jones audition and you only have these two sides which are kind of vague and uh, hint at bigger depths. Yeah. And I imagine that you're nervous just auditioning yeah. anyway. And then especially with a character that you're just making some choices with that could be totally off base. How do you take that nervousness and like win the role? Well, I guess this was in different steps. So the first step was just with ca a casting director, yeah. Carrie Barden, who- um, Who's fantastic. He's a fantastic guy and he makes you feel good. Yeah. So it's just him and the guy reading with you. And I kind of just try to like, forget what I'm doing, forget that I'm going and I'm on display and there's pressure and stakes are high and go into my own world. And it's like something that I, that you do in acting classes when you first start. Like, how do you have a private moment in front of all of these people? Yeah. You gotta go into your own imagination. So you like kind of tap into that little thing you had as a kid, right? Where you just, you know when you're a kid and you just think if you close your eyes nobody can see you? <laughs> no. No? Okay, well, I kind of do that, but I don't close my eyes. <laughs> I like it, though. I'm yeah. going to try that. Yeah, try it with your eyes open. Yeah, well. Just forget, just forget everyone's there. Just forget that everyone. Like, I have no idea anyone else is in this room. <laughs> it's just me, Kristen. It's just me right now. <laughs> um, well, also, I mean, we, we talked about Rachel Taylor, but, I mean, uh, there's another person who you have a very volatile relationship with on Jessica Jones. There's a couple. Which one? Well, <laughs> um, oh, shit. It's all good. Um, it's okay. Right, do you have it? <laughs> um, well, uh, certainly uh, Mike Coulter. Oh, yeah, Mike Coulter. I didn't know if you were talking about him or Carrie Ann or Kilgrave. Yeah, oh, Mike uh, Coulter. Well, Love me some Mike Coulter. I was going to get to Kilgrave, too, but Carrie Ann also. Yeah. Well, let's just talk about all of them in order. Okay. So Mike Coulter, um, which is a fantastic, like that scene in the bar between the two of you and the pilot. I mean, you guys saw it. Like, that's an amazing bit of. That was our audition scene, too. So we did that scene probably 30 times before we got to set. And then you have to kind of forget everything that you'd already tried, forget that people liked it like this or didn't like it like that, and just forget that all about it. insurmountably daunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun, you know, because Mike and I went through that whole process together and we did our screen test together and we were like sitting in the waiting room together, um, we kind of have this Yeah, you built up a, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that scene is just this, this masterpiece. Of fiery. Fiery. Loaded. Like, so like, sexy in the best like Lauren Bacall, Humphrey Bogart <laughs> kind of way. OK. I'm just going to hurl compliments <laughs> at you until one of them sticks. OK, thanks. So I also brought up Lauren Bacall twice tonight. I'm sorry, guys. I don't. <laughs> she's on my mind. She's always on my mind. Um, but then also, you and Carrie Ann Moss have this amazing, like, there's this antagonism in the way that you're speaking to each other, but there's also this weird Fun. level of respect. Yeah, because we need each other. Yeah, you have, you have a sparring partner in your own weight class. Right. In her. And was that immediate? Did you have to work to find Oh, that? we just hit it off from the beginning. And we it's just so, hated each other immediately. No, we love you. We're, we talk on the phone, I mean, all the time. Mike, too. I mean, I've probably talked to both of them three times already today. Um, but Carrie and I just hit it off right away, and we, had, we enjoyed each other. We had each other's back. Um, and the characters, you know, she's a worthy adversary. She is someone that Jessica needs, but doesn't, she doesn't want to need. And yep. both of them are like that. Both of them are powerful women in their own right, and they don't want to have to ask the other for favors. Yeah. 
Um, so we had a good time. That dynamic is, is really exciting. And Carrie Ann is nothing like that in real life. She's like a hippie, does yoga, <laughs> brings you like green juices and, and uh, essential oils. And then she puts on the outfit and she is just fierce. <laughs> I just love, I mean, I, of course, like, it's, it's her who is the only person who can stand up to this woman with super strength. Right. With just, like, a bob and right. or a shag and an a icy glare. Yeah. That's and, all it takes. Yeah, and, and some money. And some money. Don't forget the money. Right. Um, and then, of course, your arch nemesis, Kilgrave. Mm. David Tennant. David Tennant. Fantastic. I mean. God, he is so good. I would watch him do a five-page scene over and over and over again and change it up just a little bit, and just make it fresh. And just uh, watching his choices, he is like jazz. He's over here, then he's over there. And <laughs> he breathes so much life. And you could tell he's having a great time. He's just chewing it up. Did you, when he would um, change something slightly, do you work that same way? Are you changing things in the moment? Yeah, you know, I like to, I, I like to give a little variation, because you never know like when they get to the edit what they're going to need. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's TV, so it still moves very quickly. Um, you're not going to be doing something ten times, which I love. I love the the challenge and the pressure of having to bring your A game and nail it yeah. on the first, second, third take. Um, but I definitely don't want to get too stuck doing anything. So if he would change, I would change with him. Yeah. Is that do you do you like the um, bring your A game the first time? Is that oh yeah. For theater, is that why you like theater? I like theater because of the, the audience and the immediate response. That's why, yeah. in comedy, you know, it's fun to get laughs once in a while. Uh, yeah. But, and it's, it's the same kind of thing as if you nail it on the first take, the crew is stoked. Because then, you know, <laughs> they get to keep moving. So you kind of feed off of that, too. Yeah. Um, also, you guys, if you've never seen her on stage, she is fantastic. I don't know if you saw um, the Zach Braff play, All Good. All Good. All new all people. New people. Thank well, you, you were just saying you saw all this intimacy. I, yes, I did see all this. Saw both I saw both. Yeah. Of course, I saw both. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's goodness. fun. Theater is fun. It's a sexy life, you know. You ride the subway to the theater in the late afternoon and get get some food and get ready with everybody backstage, do the play, and yeah. then get home somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. the way you act on on the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, also, uh, you've been uh, number one on the call sheet a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, what? How do you? How do you show up? <laughs> it's so funny because when you're number one on the call sheet, they call you number one on the call sheet. <laughs> you like hear people on walkies. Number one is rounding the corner. Number one is ten one. Number one is doing this. I like, did not what? know that. Yeah. So you just hear, oh wow. You just so, hear stuff about yourself. You're like, I know that you're calling me number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how do you like? It, because the what the number one on the call sheet like kind of sets the tone for the set. So is there anything that you do? Like on the in the first couple of weeks to let everybody know what kind of what kind of leader you're going to be. I'm not like yeah. I try to get like stuff for the crew, like yeah. get some pizza for the crew on a Friday night. Slip like lottery tickets in their pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever wins though. I've always like. Well, you keep the winning tickets. Oh, no, I don't. I never win eat those things either. I gotta no. I shouldn't say that. I win all of them. You do, then you, you will win them. You, and um, you just won a Webby last night, I did too. win a Webby last night. That was fun. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank so you. you're a winner. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I do stuff like that. And I also, um, I, was, I had to train a lot doing the show. Uh, and then there wasn't a lot of time for me to continue my training with my trainer. So I had like dumbbells and stuff like, and all that shit in my trailer. And um, I would do push-ups on set. And I would always be like, all right, come on, let's do it. 20 push-ups, let's go. And you would be surprised. Like, after a couple of weeks, there, at one point, I had 20 people doing push-ups with me. Really? People want to do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a fun, a fun bonding thing. And so I, you know, misery loves company. So if I have to do a push-up, I'm going to want other people <laughs> to I kind of want to do push-ups with you yeah, right why now. Not? Well, not in No, not in those, no. Not in no. temporarily. No, later. Um, but yeah, stuff like that was really fun. And I'm not like real prissy about my hair and makeup. And especially for Jessica Jones, she's not meant to be, which was awesome. Um, so I'm like, it's fine. Let's go. Let's go. Whatever. I was going to say, is that yeah. a relief? I don't need touch ups. Is I that never a relief got touch ups. After like, don't trust the bee. Yeah, to I've, just be kind of. It was awesome. <laughs> I was never in high heels. I was comfortable. I, could, I would sit Indian style on the ground and just be the filthier the better. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a nice change. Also, because the schedule was heavy. 
I never felt a lot of pressure to come in and be like well rested. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the best job. Yeah, so that, that was cool. It was a nice change. I never felt like feminine or girly, and that was part of it. I wanted her to be like androgynous and kind of yeah. hiding from the world, but not having that like two hours of hair and makeup and lashes and did high get, heels. Did you get any input into the wardrobe? Oh, tons, yeah. I rely really heavily on wardrobe to help me find like a physicality and a yeah. walk and all of that, and it took a couple of fittings to find the right stuff, but no, I, was, I just rewatched the pilot last night for this, and I, uh, as soon as you said she was hiding, I immediately pictured those boxy sweaters. Boxy sweaters, yeah. That she put on. And yeah. I was like, oh, of course. And Melissa, our showrunner, uh, she was also, she would go with me to my fittings. And she had like a very specific aesthetic. Like there are certain tank tops that made me look like lankier than others, because I'm lanky, <laughs> you know? So we would kind of stay away from those kind of shapes and just find like the right thing. Well, what has, have people been coming up to you on the street? Talking about the show, like what is the people response? People are into it, yeah. When did you know that people were like really connecting with it? Was there a moment where it kind of blew up for you? Yeah, when it came out on the weekend. Yeah. Um, people watched the whole thing really quickly. My mom watched the whole thing by like that the Saturday after it came out. Oh wow! I know. Go mom. Go mom. Um, I remember it was I was in I was in L.A. And somebody was, so then, whatever, that weekend, I was like, oh, I love your show. And I was like, I wonder if they're talking about Don't Trust the Bee or if they've seen Jessica Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I asked them. <laughs> and then they were really into Jessica Jones. And women have come up to me um, who say they're not big superhero fans and they love Jessica. Or, or girls, have, women have come up to me and really emotionally have said that the show meant a lot to them because they were survivors of, the simil of a similar trauma. And yeah and they felt less alone by seeing this character on screen. It's awesome, it's yeah. awesome. I mean, you go to some dark places. The story, I mean, you both you as yeah. an actor and the story go yeah. in some really dark places, and is that hard to shake off at the end of the day? Sometimes, yes, sometimes it is hard, but that's the good stuff. You know, yeah. I signed on to this because I was up for this like great challenge, and I wanted to figure out whatever that, that whatever's on the page I want to do. Yeah. Um, so what's challenging about the show is what I think makes it great and why I love it so much. Well, I know uh, Melissa just told, the showrunner Melissa just told um, Hollywood Reporter in an interview that she was really worried about some of the response about some of the more, um, not scandalous, but the heavier aspects of the series. And the only really terrible response she got was uh, because of the interracial romance, she was put on a Nazi death list. That's so fucked up. Did were you getting? Did you get no. any of that kind of negative reaction about anything? No, and if I did, they can go fuck themselves. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, I, she just I, I, she mentioned that in an interview we were doing. I was I couldn't believe it. It's yeah, I mean that's insane. But I'm glad that you aren't having to deal with any no. of that stuff. No, nope, I haven't. Luckily, and um, if I did, I like I said. <laughs> so eloquently <Yeah. laughs> and perfectly. Um, all right, let's uh, do some quick audience questions. Um, oh, could you ever see uh, Jessica Jones' uh, feature film? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I think what's so great about Jessica living on Netflix, I, we get 13 hours to explore this character. And in a 90-minute movie, I don't think you'd be able to touch even even a portion of that. Yeah. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm so stoked to be on Netflix. And it's basically a 13-hour movie. So let's just call it a movie. Yes. Let's, let's say it already is a Jessica Jones movie. <laughs> um, oh, actually, uh, did Breaking Bad have an influence on your, uh, on your performance in Jessica Jones? I don't know that it had an influence on my performance because it was all I was doing was eating and sleeping and breathing Jessica. Yeah. Um, but I think it helped me get the part. That's what yeah. Mel has said. Is yeah. it is it nice to hear like that yeah. people have seen your work and totally. have responded to it? Totally. Yeah. You always want your work to be seen as long as it's good. <laughs> and yeah. Um, what do you think resonated most with uh, male and female viewers? Um, well, I think um, women have dug it because there's a it's a rad female anti-hero character that we don't see a ton of. Um, we do. There are some. 
the how to get away with murder and weeds and yeah. Nurse Jackie. There are great shows, but I think we were all itching for more. Um, and there, this is the first superhero female title. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, the fact that we have become popular and well received just shows there was an appetite for it. Absolutely. So, lucky me. And Jessica Jones is a badass. Who yeah, doesn't love a badass? She's such a badass. She's such a badass. Um, and then the last question: uh, How did you get your SAG, your SAG card? Oh wow, I I think I was like uh, I became a must join because I was an extra a few times. Nice. I oh yeah. It pays off, guys. It does. I was a featured extra a few times um, in music videos, and then I was in a movie or something um, with Ashley Judd in the background. I don't even think I made it into the film, which happens a lot. Someone like you, she's credited as model. That's the one. I read IMDb. Well, when I did it, it wasn't called that. They changed it when it came out. Um, yeah, yeah. And then the, the music videos. But yeah, I was, I was an extra. I started off being like a featured extra, and then I would get like one line here and there, and just kind of kept, kept yeah. showing up. <laughs> Kept showing up. And I mean, I can't think of a better way to end this conversation from a featured extra to the star of Jessica Jones. Wow, that's so crazy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is, but it's also well deserved. That is so crazy. That just gave me chills. Oh. Wow. Well, then I've done my job. I'm like Barbara Walters. <laughs> it takes a long time. You just got to keep showing up. Yeah. Yes. Keep showing up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, I can't give better advice than that, guys. Um, uh, that's all the time we have tonight. So thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you so much for talking tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, everyone have a good night. <laughs>